What? The N64 was the console that got me into retro gaming well over 10 years ago, and even though it was a bit before my time, it still somehow invokes a feeling of nostalgia to me. They aren't exactly a rarity, but I'm glad that I kept the same N64 and my favorite games, and I don't have any plans of ever getting rid of it. So recently, I went back and played my N64. It made me realize just how much I love playing old games on their original hardware. But I can't lie, emulation is something I've spent countless hours looking into and playing around with over the years. But the N64 has proven to be pretty difficult to emulate correctly. It's been around for nearly as long as the console itself has existed, and has seen a lot of improvement over the years, but accuracy is still hit and miss for quite a few games, and that's just kind of the nature of emulators. But in the past couple of years, we've been able to see a whole new side of these old N64 games. One that doesn't require an emulator or original hardware at all. Thanks to community projects like N64 Recomp, we're now able to play native PC ports of N64 titles like Perfect Dark, with more possibilities than emulation could ever offer. So let's discuss Perfect Dark's decompilation and PC port, as well as what these advancements mean for the future of retro gaming. Now anybody familiar with the N64 surely knows that spinning blue and gold rareware logo. They were the console's most well-known development studio over its lifespan, being the creators behind some of its most famous titles like Donkey Kong 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and so many more. Of course, GoldenEye 007 was their biggest work, a game so recognizable that nearly three decades later, people who have never even touched the console know of the game pretty well. For their next FPS game, Rare would release Perfect Dark in 2000, building upon GoldenEye's foundation in its very own unique setting. It didn't exactly bring in the sales numbers that 007 could, but uh, I guess you could say over 2 million units sold is still pretty good, and it has since become one of the N64's most iconic games. Unsurprisingly, it would stay exclusive to the console until seeing a sort of soft reboot and remaster for the Xbox 360. And we won't talk about those. Fast forward to 2019 when a user named WiseGuy released N64 Recomp, a tool that translates Nintendo 64 binaries into C code, which can then be recompiled into native executables to run on different platforms. That same year, another user named Ryan Dwyer began this process for Perfect Dark, with its recompilation currently sitting at full completion. And that's what brings us to the Perfect Dark PC port. I'm expecting a good show. Don't let me down. I'll start off by saying, by the way, that this port is entirely legal. The project doesn't come with any of the game's assets prepackaged as it requires an original ROM to play. And the installation itself is pretty simple. Download the port's latest release, and using a compatible, 100% legally obtained Perfect Dark ROM, run the executable from the port, and that's all. I realize that all the ports I've covered on my channel so far have been PC games that got ported to consoles, so you probably get to hear me cry a lot about control schemes. Well, you're in luck this time because this has full mouse and keyboard support, which by the way does feel really really responsive. I actually love the N64 controller despite its weird look but I am kind of a PC gamer at heart, and I mostly suck with controllers and FPS games by comparison. Now being able to play this game with so much more coordination, I'll admit I totally ended up ignoring all of its cool stealth mechanics because being able to rip around corners at 60 FPS blasting everything in sight with my good old mouse and keyboard just felt kinda awesome. As this is a one-to-one -one port that uses the game's original ROM, there's no extra added content, so anybody familiar with Perfect Dark can expect a similar experience. What it does feature are some modern quality of life improvements, like support for unlocked FPS, widescreen, FOV configuration, mouse look, modern controllers, and, well, even more. And the nature of it being a native port also allows for some limited modding capabilities. The extended section contains some optional extras as well, like anti-aliasing and texture filtering 
which are subtle enough that they don't really change the original look of the game. Texture filtering is of course just going to smooth out the blockiness on some of the textures, but I'm impartial here, the blocky textures really don't bother me much in the first place. There is an option for texture filtering on the UI as well, but it generally looks pretty odd. Again, that's because it's using the game's original assets. The higher resolution and the minor graphical tweaks do have an effect on the look of the game, but the thing I really enjoy about a lot of these ports is that they try their best to maintain the original atmosphere with just a little bit of modernization. So it's perfect dark. And other than running into some very minor graphical bugs and the high FOV being a little bit weird at times, it's pretty well flawless to me. Even the old N64 style aiming is still here, and it's a little bit strange with a mouse, but totally works just fine. What makes this different from traditional emulation is the way it uses the method of static recompilation instead of dynamic recompilation. N64 emulators use the method of dynamic recompilation. It reads in the game's code and more or less translates it on the fly to code that can be read by the target platform. That's not to say this isn't impressive. But it does come with its downsides, like occasional inaccuracies being generally slower and less efficient. N64 Recomp instead uses static recompilation, where the game is decompiled, translated, and recompiled before being played, so no translation is needed at runtime. Decompiling also grants access to the game's source code, which allows for all sorts of possibilities for editing the code before being recompiled. It's a pretty complicated process that can take a long time to get right on a game-by-game -game basis, Case in point, the full 1 to 1 decompilation of Ocarina of Time took nearly two years to complete. It is done. Two years. We started this in 2019. This topic goes a lot deeper than that, so I'll provide some resources down below if you want to learn more there. Now having the ability to play these old games on modern hardware with ease is cool to see, but it's much more important than just being a great way to play old games. While Nintendo 64s probably aren't going anywhere anytime soon, the console was discontinued well over 20 years ago, which means they aren't going to be around forever. And the ability to decompile and research how these games work is a pretty major step for game preservation, which itself is already an ongoing issue. Perfect Dark isn't the only game with these types of projects. Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and more have already been fully decompiled and other games like GoldenEye currently have their own PC ports in the works right now. Ultimately, it marks a pretty big advancement for the community, and the idea that we could get more of these ports in the near future is pretty exciting news. So until all 750 polygons of James Bond are natively ported to our PCs, this version of Perfect Dark is a great experience to have in the meantime. <laughs>